prices fall 10% overnight because there's a bunch of manipulation in the futures market. Oh, by the way, oldest trick in the book, right? Oldest trick in the book. If you want to buy a lot of something, what do you do? Do you go out and start buying it? Hell to the no. You sell some, you tell everyone how much it sucks, you short it, you push the price down so you can buy more at a lower price. It's the oldest trick on Wall Street. I mean, I tell a story all the time. Dwight Anderson, he went to Julian and said, hey, Julian, we should buy a bunch of copper. Here's all my analysis, all stuff. And Julian's like, yeah, that's, that's great. He says, all right, how much should I buy? He's like, no, I want you to sell 50 million. And then I want you to tell the New York Times that we're selling. And I want you to tell everybody at Morgan Stanley how much it sucks. Then we'll buy after the price goes down. Morgan Creek Capital founder, CIO, and managing director Mark Yusko has described the decline in Bitcoin prices as a Wall Street slash BlackRock crash, the price we have to pay for the giant asset manager's interest in the cryptocurrency industry. According to Yusko, price suppression is one of Wall Street's favorite playbooks. In a recent interview with Anthony Pompliano, Yusko explains that BlackRock and other big Wall Street players assess a market thoroughly before getting into it. If prices need to be lowered, they do just that by making the asset less desirable to other buyers. The Morgan Creek Capital founder believes BlackRock has been playing some sort of game with Bitcoin prices since last year, way before the spot Bitcoin ETFs got approved in January. Talks about price manipulation by BlackRock and Fidelity have been making the rounds since last year. Many critics of the spot Bitcoin ETFs use the activities of big commercial banks like JP Morgan as an example of the dubious means large financial institutions can use to disrupt an industry to further their aims. Critics have also pointed to the activities of the US Securities and Exchange Commission against the cryptocurrency industry and how often these witch hunting activities coincide with sudden price drops. The latest enemy in the SEC's line of fire is Ethereum and the Ethereum Foundation. According to reports, the SEC is collecting information against the foundation in its bid to declare the leading altcoin as a security. Are these activities in any way connected, or is this just another evidence of crypto market volatility? We will now bring you clips from Yusko's interview, as the renowned hedge fund manager presents his arguments about what he calls BlackRock's crash. As we do, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks, and enjoy the video. So this, this it doesn't happen every day, but if you watch, um, in the evenings or, or mid-afternoon, you get these, these ramps down, and that's people pushing the futures down. Here's the scariest part. You know, there's a great chart that shows most of the gains in the stock market, right? Stock market's gone up a lot over the last five years. Most of the gains don't happen when the market's open from 9.30 to 4 o'clock. The vast majority, and it's not quite 100%, but it's pretty close, happen overnight. All this is crazy. All of the gains in the Bitcoin ETFs happen overnight, 100%. None of it's happening during the day because what's wow. happening is right before, right before close, the big dogs are selling naked in the futures market. They're pushing the price down. ETFs have to buy. They can only trade the last minute of the day. Literally, Right? ETFs set a price the last minute of the day, then they have to go get the Bitcoin overnight um, or, or settle it the next morning. So they're pushing the price down. They're marking the price at the, the close. And then it opens higher and they capture all that gain for themselves. And this again, this is not new and it's not unique to the Bitcoin ETFs. Watch most big stocks. They kind of go back and forth and back and forth during the day. And then they gap open the next day or they gap down. It, all of the, and that's just futures create uh, irrational, not irrational. They, they create manipulatable markets, right? If all there was was spot Bitcoin and you and I, right? If I wanted to sell you a Bitcoin, I actually had to have a Bitcoin. But that's not the case anymore. With futures, if I want to sell you a Bitcoin, all I have to do is write you a contract. And as long as I go get a Bitcoin before that contract settles, we're good. 
But if we cancel the contract before I have to go find a physical Bitcoin, and this is, so what's happening yesterday evening, two days ago, a couple of days ago, actually last Friday, you know, when, when Michael, and I won't say Michael's doing this, but he knows he's got to buy a bunch of Bitcoin because he just issued a bunch of debt to go buy Bitcoin. Would you rather buy at high prices or low prices? Low prices. I actually think it's BlackRock, right? They have to buy lots of Bitcoin. Do you follow, um, what's it, C15 Capital? It's a, a thing on, on a guy on Twitter. I think it's a guy, maybe it's a girl. Um, I think it's called C15. Anyway, I should, I should give the person credit. But they started tracking these 100 wallets that were kind of new right before the ETF launch. And there's this one, he calls him Mr. 100. And again, I don't know if it's a guy or a gal, but Mr. 100, who every day is buying, irregardless. And, and this morning he said he bought into the dip last night. Well, of course, my belief, that's somebody related to, it's probably not Larry himself, but somebody related to the BlackRock network. And if you knew that you had 10-ish billion of demand for your new Bitcoin ETF, you don't know where you're going to find that because there's not that much circulating supply ready to trade. So what would you do? Before the launch, because you knew when the launch was going to happen, they, they knew, you would go accumulate a bunch so you could sell it to yourself. And I think that's what's happening. According to recent reports, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is using the merge, the final phase of Ethereum's transition to proof-of-stake consensus, to reclassify the leading altcoin as a security. The agency has reportedly issued subpoenas to three well-known crypto companies asking for records about the Ethereum Foundation. According to a recent Fortune report, the investigation into the foundation could give the SEC regulatory coverage to define Ethereum as security and possibly make it easier to deny the spot Ethereum ETF applications from BlackRock and others. The foundation has also revealed via GitHub that it may be under investigation by a state authority. As a result of the SEC's witch hunting activities and the agency's attitude towards the ETH ETF applications, Bloomberg ETF analysts Eric Balchunas and James Seifart have lowered their expectations that the applications will be approved by the May 23rd deadline. According to recent posts on X, the Bloomberg ETF analysts have now lowered the chance of the approvals to 25%. Comparatively, they had a 90% chance of approval for the Bitcoin ETFs last year. Despite these events, Yusko believes there is a probability the ETH ETFs get approved in late 2024, after the US presidential elections. However, he is skeptical that we will get more crypto-based ETFs after that. Let's get back to the interview. My immediate answer is no. Um, and why do I think that? Is I don't think the regulators would have approved the Bitcoin ETF if it weren't for the courts, right? Forcing Gensler's hand. Now, the flip side of that is, I do think the, the person who's making that decision is BlackRock, not really Gensler or anybody else. I, I actually believe that. And, and look, I was wrong about this. I thought literally they were going to approve only BlackRock, right? I thought they were going to tell everybody else to, to pound sand and they were going to approve BlackRock and let them. So. I think it's great that they approved all the others. And, you know, full disclosure, we own pieces, you know, because you and I invested with Jason in in a piece of two of the companies that that have, you know, part of the newborn nine. So that's exciting. There's there's no impetus for the SEC to go further uh, because they haven't been forced. Now, the flip side of that is if if BlackRock says, this E thing looks big. I can make a lot of money. So I want that one. That one could happen. When you start getting down below that, I just don't know that the market caps are big enough for those other people to care. And that's, I think, how those decisions get made. If, if BlackRock decides they want it, then it will happen. Because uh, remember, Winklevoss Twins created the idea for the ETF 11 years ago. 11 years ago. It's my mind is blown. And they were said no. And then other people tried, you know, 21 shares and Bitwise and, you know, all these people tried. 
No, 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 no. Last June, BlackRock says, all right, we're in. Boom. Six months later. I mean, it didn't even take that long. I mean, in regulatory. I mean, it's a long time in, in life, but not in regulatory time. It's possible the, the Ethereum ETF could get approved because it's big enough at 360 or 380 billion. I'm not sure what the market cap is now. Um, maybe it's 400, but that, that one's big enough. The other ones I just don't think are big enough to matter. BlackRock's crash or otherwise, Bitcoin is performing better today. According to data from CoinMarketCap, the leading crypto asset by market cap is up by around 2% in the past 24 hours and about 6% in the past five days. Plus, it's a new trading week, a new week for the spot Bitcoin ETFs to break some more records and contribute to higher prices for the leading cryptocurrency. What are your thoughts on Mark Yusko's interview? Do you agree that this is a BlackRock crash without any lasting effects on prices? Please drop your thoughts, comments, and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. You can also check out our other videos featuring insightful analysis and discussions from Yusko and other prominent personalities in the crypto space. Thanks for watching.